Alright, so where was I again? Right, we're almost out of food. Uh, we're running for our lives. And I have no idea where exactly I'm going on this map. Wait, no, I do remember. I remember we need to make it here. So we got a long, uh, long way to go. I think. I've got only seven days worth of food to make it. And an entirely injured party. I might take two days to rest. Because that'll free up a lot of my party. In case anything horrible goes wrong. Alright, ready? One. And two. And that... Should bring a lot of my guys back into, uh, into service. Oh, man. Hopefully we get some supplies along the way, but, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on it. The end of the world, as we know it. A group of men with broad shoulders and thick cloaks approach the caravan. There might be outlaws you hear nearby, and the idea quickly ripples through the clansmen. One of the strangers approaches, saying, We run out of food. Any help would be welcome. His hard eyes reveal nothing of his motivations. Um. I'd like to know what they're doing. The men get nervous and reveal sturdy weapons. The warrior steps forward until the leader holds out his hand, saying loudly, The last group to ask us questions tried to kill us. Tried. Let's keep this simple. Will he help us or not? Um, fight with us and earn your food? That would be the best option. The men look surprised by your offer. In short order, they join the caravan and start sharing tales and drinks. Fortunately, it is less than a day later you discover they vanished along with the size and portion of your supplies. Great! Now I have no day's worth of supplies. Harsh words from one mother to another draws the attention of the entire caravan. My daughter marries Ragni, or no one. That reed thip tramp you call a daughter won't provide sons. Insulted mother bears her teeth, ready to attack. Explain yourselves! Ragni chooses my daughter on his own. The insulted mother says, but this one thinks I have something to do with it. Launching forward, the first woman flails wildly, shouting, liar. The women are separated and eventually calm down. Be worried, this is far from over. Uh, we're out of food, ladies. Now is not the time. Oh. 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 Uh. It appears that large figures falling from the direction of Anertoft. Olaf watches intently before finally saying, they have a cart. I can hear it. You slow to get a better view of this way. Spy a small caravan afar. Eventually they catch up. Uh oh. Please please tell me you come with food. Greetings, Isla. It's been a while since we talked, hasn't it? I know you. Uvin. Never imagined you that you wanted to defy the king. What made you leave? Someone had to. What do you mean? Bellor is headed this way. Already? How is that possible? A group of far off and worm toe shut up around the back of Ironcroft. The long way. Elower and his army chased them across the summer path, they said. Past Wormtoe? That doesn't make any sense. Bellower is at the bridge. He must have doubled back after that serpent appeared. While we fought on the bridge, he led half his forces around to Eidertoft from behind. The attack on the bridge was a feint? Don't let anyone tell you the dredge aren't clever. Eidertoft will fall within a day. Maybe not. He's following you. I thought one of you might know why. You exchange nervous glances, but nobody speaks up. It must be me, then. Is there something I don't know? That's quite a grudge he's holding if he's coming for you, Ivor. It doesn't matter. Our only chance is to get to Slingerhold. Juno will know what to do. We'll join you. A 
bring supplies and warriors. And my friend Gunolf here prepares a heavy sword. Be if he'd be happy to swing it for you. Oh! Oh! Man, we got six whole days. Let's pause for a second. 18 renown, too. Oh, and Gunolf? Oh, I'm so happy. You don't talk much, do you? You approach the massive, approach the massive green fed bar who's sitting quietly by himself eating bread. So? I just wanted to know if anyone who can cleave a dredge or two like that a little better. I'm Rook. What to know? Who would ask me to chop a dredge or two? I chop. Travel with Ubin for long? Yes, long time. When I was young, I fight for another bar. It did not work out. But I learned this from this sword. Ubin pays well. There's plenty of things to kill. To be honest, maybe too many things these days. You can spin in your spots. No, I love this sword. Give it to him by old Scrimmer himself. Scrimmer? I start with Ruben, he says, I protect the king's collection. I protect the king. Good off, makes an expression somewhere between pain and frustration. I couldn't save it, though. Makes a hand motion like an object falling from tall height and exploding. Mattered a lot at the time. Didn't think it, I don't think it matters now. Scrimmer is dead anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I wanted to let you save it, but I couldn't risk you. Want to be friends with Gunolf, Rook? Pops the last hunk of bread into his mouth. Keep food in the car. I'm, I'm trying, okay? I didn't mean to run out. I got... <laughs> I had my stuff stolen. It's not... I, I didn't mean to, okay? Um... I'm gonna swap Mogan for Gunolf. I know I, you know, complain about him not having armor a whole lot, but, uh... I have the same two things. Maybe I should just, like, give this to him. I mean, Ivor's got a lot of armor anyway. Yeah. Maybe that'll keep him alive. <laughs> Maybe just a bit longer. Um, I can also level up somebody. I also don't have Odalife on the team, which kind of sucks. But if I've learned anything, it's that archers, for as wonderful as they sound, I actually just suck with them. <laughs> that's that's the long and short of it. I just suck with them. I also don't have Yvind. It would have been nice to keep him in there, but I think we'll be okay. Let's upgrade this guy. I like I like Egil. Yeah, I know. Thank you. We'll give him one more strength. And I think... One more of these. Yeah. That seems like a decent... And because I can just do this, because I, ha I should probably save just in case. Just in case we end up coming across a camp somehow. And here's Ubin, I think. I think that's Ubin. Oh, man. It'd really be nice to come across, you know. The caravan stops us flipping the road. Ahead, the path leading to Sega Home veers off of the hills, turn now swimming with familiar black shapes. Dredge that way too, Grimace's event. The summer path leads straight to Sigurholm, while taking the main road will add several days. They're everywhere by now, suggests, replies Zubin. I suggest we go around past Hawkstorp. Uh, we'll go this way. I hate to say it, Televind, but I'm not willing to walk into swarms of dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. Turn the, toward the long round to run to Hawkstorp instead, hoping you can save lives in the process. Oh, uh, that's not... I want to say it's a terrible idea, but that's also the chance for maybe one more battle without having to fight too much, and a chance at, you know, buying some supplies that we can survive off of. Thieving bastards, you awakened to hear. The small band of outlaws who previously joined the caravan made up a substantial number of supplies when they slept to watch me you. Why in the depths were they allowed to join us to begin with? Oh, wow. I didn't expect that would happen way later. We're gonna rest here for the for the whole morale thing. So, you enter a village of miners who want to know what's been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and the sighting of the dreads in the distance. 
As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children. You know that these people will only be more mouths to feed. Let them make their own decision. You welcome anyone who wishes to join the caravan. Many do well, let's change the state of their homes. See things through. You wish them luck. Uh, we gotta buy some supplies, like, right away. Never deflected. Wow. That's cool and everything, but I need... Alright. I need that. And I need to rest a day or two. Can I survive with good morale? Or do I want to wait one more? The music has really picked up, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Alright, here we go. That shuts one of your clowns. When the caravan stops, just watch Dredge pulling into the village you just passed through. I hope anyone who stayed alive behind gets out alive, says Aleph, but you have your doubts. They're coming, says Ivor, pointing out a line of Dredge leaving the village and marking towards you. As you watch, the Dredge fall in front, in front falls over, and the left one falls as well. You hear the twang, you're left. Nid, the archery student of Olaf's, who recalls deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another Dredge topples. That's incredible, says our life squinting, but we should get out of here. I cannot risk going back. Well, why don't you come with that next time? You want to try out that bow? You tell me. Who nods? A smile on her face. Great. Now I've got another warrior that I can't stick in my party. Do we have an, ever have an uneventful day? As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon and a few tents. A woman cries out, My boy! and points to a dirty tent close to the outlying farm. Two of the giants are motionless, saying it's pretty high. Uh. Go on after the boy yourself. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke of the flames of the tent becomes blurred. As you grab the boy and slice the back canvas and your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the Earl of Varro while the crowd cheers and your hero cracked. Fortunately, the supply wagon did not make it. Ah! <laughs> What in the depths was that about, you muttered to yourself? Something about the fire, Total Life tells you. I've heard of this before. They don't like it. It doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Uh. This isn't good. <clears throat> I. I can't afford. I can't afford this. Holy crap, green. Great, another godstone. But this doesn't give me any food. That's really cool. Why is it separated like that, though? Why perfectly like that? The dog stone of the dumb passes around you. In the frozen climate here, it looks like the rock is split and is now falling apart. Now the wind's together by the deep snow. Curiously, the stem between the stones, the wind drops off completely. Picked up, picked up once again, and it's a pass through. I almost wonder if there's less here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. Well, the snow around the dredge might not even be able to find us. I don't have the supplies to stay anywhere. Inspect the godstone, but move on afterward. Along each strand of Dunder's massive beard is carved in different parts of the stone. You turn your head to and throw to readings. While the little mother was the first to create, you soon found a counterpart in Dunder. Uh, can I go to my options and turn on the music real quick? <laughs> Who embodied her ideals in a masculine form? Dunder took to some of the creations gave them beards and showed them the secrets of smithing. But many remember him just as fondly for teaching them games and songs of play. After a short break, he get the people back on their feet. The other changes may suddenly find ourselves freezing to death up here, you say. So listen to your words, so care and continue to hold on. Yeah, holy crap. They got really loud all of a sudden. We start losing people. I don't think I'm gonna get anything until over here. Mm. Uh, I don't like. You notice most of all pacing while each other sleep. The brief conversation with each other and other clansmen grows shorter and sharper. Go away, Rosie. Young Varl or young woman asking too many questions. All clansmen stop and stare. 
break the tension by making a joke. Uh, these are horrible options. What is wrong? The giant explains, we live in the north where it's space. Endless miles of snow, m ice, mountains, fields. Space to be alone, but here there is no such t no time for such things. Understanding slowly trickles through the caravan, relieving some of the tension. Meaning they like to be alone. Long and short of it. Oh uh, no, I'm going to lose some more people before we get to the frickin' city army. I'm sorry. In the distance, Hawksdorf smolders like an old campfire. Even here you can see the black figure shambling through it. That looks like a dead town. Remarks Iric, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors on alert for my youth. Alright. I hope others do the same for me. Dredge or nothing we haven't faced before, Ivor grunts, but no one says nothing. This is gonna suck. Besides, I might throw Bellower off the scent of it. I... As soon as you step out from this small town, you think you've made a mistake. It's thoroughly littered with corpses. When the moment the dredger upon you, as you start to make your hornet's nest. This is good. I can earn some renown and buy some supplies. This this is not bad. Right? 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 Alright, let's give that to him. Maybe that'll uh halt halt his death for you know. Oh, what a horrible setup. Oh, oh, I hate this. Um. Put him over here. Holy crap. That guy needs to take some damage. Put him in a bit. We'll set up my uh, my shield wall. We'll put Rook just in the back a bit. We'll see if we can't clear this area before these guys come and murder me from the back. Who goes first, anyway? That guy. Okay. Some damage is always good to start. A terrible idea. Who goes next? That guy. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. Nice. start whittling this guy down right away. By that I mean break his armor. Uh... Oh, that's not good. Who goes next? That guy? Alright, we're gonna put you just right here for the time being. chip off of him, the more...
Okay, when's his turn again? Not before I give him a good whack, it's not. Oh, I didn't even see those. Oh, crap. So they just explode dealing damage to anybody. That's good. I'll get him to go uh, take out this guy because he doesn't have much. Hey, don't hurt my dude. That's my dude. Don't hurt him. right now I can hit this guy cool let's do that I need to not have him standing on that thing. I'm glad their abilities don't cost any freaking willpower.
Give him the full swing! Maybe, hopefully. Nice. Uh-oh. Well, that really sucked. Uh. I'll give him the good old run through. And gun off. That's three days of resting I gotta go through. But, ten renown that I can buy supplies with. This town is nothing but ghosts. Now covered in more dredged bodies, too. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered market stall with a couple of items in front of him. He humps to himself as though the other were wrong and seems to be in shock. Your cl class would gather him in the caravan before you leave. Holy crap. That's all I can get, so that's all I can buy. Well, I mean, that's good, I think. I think. I don't know if we've ever spoken. I'm Nid, you're Rook, I know. We've actually been traveling together for a long time. It is strange how you can be so close to people and not know them. Every day I pass people I swear I've never seen before. I want to thank you for letting me join you. You always be in such a good shot? Honestly, I never tried before Olaf made me. I spent my whole life making clothes, cleaning. Olaf's good, but I don't think it was all her doing. It feels right. I just look where I wanted to go. Anyway, I feel better. The caravan, people all worrying all day, made making problems. Sometimes they really stew in their misery. I'm glad I could do something helpful. Where are you from? I don't think you're from Skogur. I know most of the people there. No, I had a house in Frostmiller, but we were driven out when the dredge started to show up. My husband died trying to protect our home. My sons and I were thrown out into the fields. I'm sorry. It kills men killed my husband, and now it kills traveling with us. For a long time I was angry. Why did he get to live? Why did you decide for the rest of us? You look away momentarily. I'm not sure what to say. But I've let it go. I have three sons, and I don't want them to grow up with hatred in their hearts. That's why I wanted to thank you. You're welcome. I should be going. Don't think of anything with it. We should don't think anything of it. We should have all problems to deal with. Let me know if you need some need me to put an arrow in something. Okay, I will. I'm not sure how much I trust archers at this point. Do you come with a level? <gasps> you come at level two with a promotion ready to go? Wow. Can I even level anybody up? I don't think I have it. I don't think I have the the resources. Oh man. So I can't, I can't just, holy crap, and there's no, uh, guys, guys, this is bad, this is really, this is really bad, we ain't had nothing to make any bread for three stinking days, ugh. Ahead, you find what appears to be a good number of peasants surrounded by brigands. One of the armed men looks over his shoulder and says, God be damned, this is all I need. Listen, don't interfere, one of these supply wagons is yours. Remaining silent, the peasants plead with you with their eyes. Uh, what's going on? Nothing concerning you, he replies, and before you start telling me otherwise, these are my clansmen. I thought they could run off with every scrap of food in the village. No, all I want is you to move on, so take the share or don't. Uh -huh. Oh, man! 
do I help them? Or do I just take the supplies and be an asshole? Alette would hate me. Uh, I gotta help. Do I turn to you shaking his head? Had a feeling you'd be that type. He says, as all the brigands rush you. Oh, dear. Well, I mean, at the very least, I mean, I think this means supplies. Yay? Oh, there's not met that many of them. I expected there to be more. Call this Formation Alpha. Who moves first? Their archer way over there? Chip away some armor. <laughs> Oh, he's a flailer. Well, he's gonna be flailing dead now. Uh, I don't think I need to give him a nine. I'm gonna save some willpower so I don't waste it all immediately. This guy out. I gotta get him out of there. He's gonna take unnecessary damage if he stays. next is that her okay I'm gonna try this this tech That was that was nice. I'm not gonna lie, that was that was pretty nice. Mm, who was next? That guy. Okay. Let's take him out. Or at least get rid of some of his uh Bloody flail. Uh, yeah, we'll get that guy because he's next. Dude, can I? Oh, it would hit him. Wait, it only strikes two if I don't do the if I don't do the second one, so 
Nice. I know, but I got some supplies and some renown. All in all, it wasn't a terrible engage. The brigands see their fallen or fled. The peasants leave left behind will thank you profusely. It's true what he said. We took the food and left. May the gods have mercy on me. I'd let them die. They hesitantly joined your caravan. 22. Oh. Oh, thank goodness. Holy crap. Oh, another godstone. With a dead person? Or... A dredge? That's a, that's a dredge! Right? It is a dredge! I forgot I could zoom in. The godstone for Ingrid, goddess of knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes much needed rest. I have shoes some children away from a solitary dredge slinger lying dead beneath the stone. Are you worried about that, you ask Ivor, pointing the dredge bone? I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours passed without warning. Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient runes that don't make sense to you, though Evin tells you some of the Menders have deciphered them. Show us how the Menders learned the language of the gods. Past the larger stone, the long series of slabs contains more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who it is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but can be nearly about any topic. Sadly, Yvin doesn't know how to read it himself. Judo code, he says. As he's writing the part, he hears screams from the near the, 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 the main godstone. The, boy was, the same boy is so curious about the dead dredge before shrieking and pointing. For moments, you think it may not have been dead, but then you see that they've opened the wrapping those in the dredge's hand. Wait, Ivor says, his arm across the chest. This, could be, this shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. Shield sweeps over you. Alette pushes past and gasps. Stop, shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. What is it? What is it? Leave it. On the ground, before the dead slinger is a small stony figure, its hand searching for something it can't find. That's a baby. That dredge is a woman? We've been killing women. We've been slaughtering women and children this entire time. What? Huh? There's females? There's female rock people? Leaving them to die? In war, it's only the males who fight. We've been fighting the dredge the whole way. Why are women with children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading. They're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan is gathered around, aghast. When I spoke to Juno, she told me something was coming. She didn't know what. A darkness, something black, is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it just as we're running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew! Why? Why didn't you say something? Ivor? When I was young, I killed one of the Sunder during the Second Great War. We called it Rays. Every time we built our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the Varl and stumbled upon Rays deep in a snowstorm. Alone, she was nursing. Through my axe, it twisted the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed a Sunder. When I found my way to Grafheim, the Varl wanted to make me Kender, next to be king. I left. Walked until I ended up in Skoger, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. For a long time, nobody says a thing until the child breaks the silence. What do we do with the baby? She asks. A lump forms in your throat, looking at the small obsidian creatures where before you. Okay, you know I want to take it. You know I want to bring him along. But I say we put it to a vote. While well, some grumble about leaving its chance, the caravan votes pretty clearly in favor of leaving the infant behind. It remains beneath the god's stone as the caravan departs. Try, try to put the whole episode from your mind and focus now on reaching Sigurd. Oh, man. I wanted... I should have brought it. I should have took it. Oh, man. That just blows my mind. I did not know they had genders. I didn't know the dredge 
had genders. They don't look like they'd have genders. It doesn't look like there'd be males or females. You're making the usual sounds as you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area of the Varl Cabin. I rejoice you as you approach. Ubin, you have rather known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a meat house than battling a sundeer? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. <laughs> Don't even know what you're worried about. I did a hundred times in the Great War. Take some warriors, plow head first to the dredge. They follow you to the hills, get lost, now they're not following you. When you did this a hundred times, did the Bellower did they have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? Both Varl halt the debate when you suddenly notice you're watching. Don't stop on my account. Careful, my friend. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. The warriors are just noticing there's a good, damn good number of dredge on our asses. Bellower pulling up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? Thought you'd be finally, thought you'd be happy to finally be oldest far on the land, Ubin. I'm never happy to lose more vile crewmen. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. <laughs> I like that. I like that whole thing. Uh, old rivalry you got here. Comments like that remind me, I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. The old days I'd be halfway to battle by now. Speaking of which, you coming, Yuvar? You can ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so. I'm not exactly in the mood right now. All right, then. I'll tell Hardball you said hello. You're a good time, and a good many Varl warriors headed towards the growing army of Dredge. Is he going to come back? He always has before. But this time feels different, I fear. I... I don't know if he will. I didn't realize that taking that dialogue option would send him away anyway. This is a... Uh, a well-attended farm with plenty of livestock draws the caravan's attention. Upon your arrival, the farmer and his workers stand offensively within plain sight. Crude weapons at the ready. Their crossed arm makes for their thoughts clear without a word. Offer some kind of trade for livestock. No big surprise if you're more interested in the animals than me and mine, he says in space. The answer is no, and I'll just have these men watching you, so none of my livestock. Okay, bye. What's well, his is his, you say to the caravan. No sense fighting those trying to protect themselves. Grumbling bounces around through the clansmen, but the caravan is once again moving. Well, I mean, I should have offered to take them all with me, but we're almost there. We'll make it in two days. Gather around, doubters, echoes <laughs> the distance, as Kermit as bad a boy as break through the nearby foliage. And behold, the invincible Varl. The caravan is thrilled to see Kermit return safely. If the plan works, it as soon work, responds Kermit. Of course it works. Same old dredge. Should be another day or two, at least, before they even find their own asses. And if you apologize... I'll tell you how I found these, Kruber says, tossing a big pile of leather gloves that look big enough for a bottle. He lives in clothes, whispering to Uman so Uman can't hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hair tie. Oh, man, I love, I love these characters. They make me smile, and they make me laugh. As Sigurholm approaches, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud home sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? At the very least, I've got 35 renown now. I can buy some supplies. One catastrophe to another, says your own life as you pull into Sager Home. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. The townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hovels further up the hill. No, says you've been looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here, and you get the creepy feeling you're not welcome either. Going up river looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait? Taking stock of the caravan, you inadvertently walk in a debate between Olaf and the event. 
as long as we need to. And I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. The people here are staring at us like those vultures in the waste. I'm sorry, Vint. I think going to life is right. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. Uh, in a creepy way. How long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come. Give us a little more time, Rook. Listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. Uh, so we're waiting here? Question mark? Let's talk to Vint really quick. Before I end this episode, you're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here, or something has happened to her. Are you really sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream, or I don't know, you were pretty exhausted. I I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure any anymore. Everything is a blur. And don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. How exactly does weaving work anyway? Well, the hardest part is usually seeking the threads. Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like playing, trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Some menders carve intricate patterns of the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Uh, like I said, hard to explain. Uh... I mean, it does look cool, though. What's it like? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just a part of me. They, really, they knew very young that I would join the Order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both members. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, that's not normal. One of the reasons I knew Judo. She went on the council. She helps me control things like this. So we don't end up scaring people. Why is Bellor still following us? I saw Grofheim as it burnt. Yvette gets a faraway look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest. The varl fell in the thousands. Most of the sunder left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading towards Aberang. Bellower stayed in Grafheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einerthoft, I thought he must have wanted to wipe the varl off the map completely. But then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Raze. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Do you think this is the end times? I... I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said that darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it means even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The Menders are in Aberang. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. I won't take any more time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. Spend all day worrying about the serpents or Sunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated, or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks, buddy. Alright, let's go to the market really quick. 84. One renown gets three. Ugh. That's nice. Can't use it, but it's nice. Two armor per turn? That's really nice, too. Alright, well, we have ten days. Uh, let's go to the heroes and see who can't level up really quick. Plus three break. Plus three strength. Ooh. Um. I think it takes... 20 to put him to... No, 15. Okay. Shoot. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do. Let's take you out of there. And we'll put... Uh... She's got more willpower, but her life just seems better all in all. Let's put her in there and make her level 3. We're going to give you one more break. And one more armor. Yes. And let's see if I can't give you a quick item.
That's really good. Why don't you give that to her really quick? I mean, I'm not using Onef while he's injured, so I may as well save that thing. Uh, I could give her the aggro thing, too. Give her the aggro ban and give uh, give him this thing. Because that's, that's a really good item, the more I think about it. Mm, yeah. I think... And then I'll use the rest of my Renown to just get an extra day of supplies. <sighs> well, some people died of starvation, and I feel sorry for them. 